What's going on guys, Shannon here. Spawn Volume 2 picks up where Volume 1 left off, with issues 13 through 33 of the original single issues. For those of you who are more into the Spawn Origins uh, trade paperbacks, you can find the same stories in books 2, 3, 4, 5, and the beginning of 6. Spawn Volume 2 contains stories by Todd McFarlane and art by Grant Morrison, Mark Silvestri, and Greg Capullo. Volume 2 picks up with Spawn's power meter showing a level of 7926. I don't want to go as much into uh, this volume as I did with Volume 1, so I'll pretty much just be giving you the cliff notes, and for everything else, you can read it for yourselves. Spawn breaks into the Youngblood HQ like a ninja. He knows his way around because he was recruited to be a member alongside his friend at the time, Chapel. Badrock, the muscle of the team, is supposed to be monitoring the security cameras, but instead is playing video games, while the rest of the team is training. Spawn makes himself known to the team just before teleporting away with Chapel in tow. When the two reach their destination, Spawn reveals his identity to Chapel and brands the skull image into Chapel's face permanently. We then return to New York City alleyways with the clown known as Violator, paying a group of children to listen to his stories of his battle with the medieval Spawn. A short while later, we make our way to Simmonsville, a fictional town created at the opening of to hell made of psychoplasm, taking the form of all the places that Al Simmons grew up around. Simmonsville is filled with other demons who slaughtered soldier, who slaughter soldier after soldier that Jason Wynn sends in to demonstrate to a general. <clears throat> up next is the birth of the anti-spawn. A group of beings in outer space consumed by holy fire teleport a human vessel to their orbital station to bestow upon with the power of heaven to become the anti-spawn. The human they choose is none other than the man who ordered Al Simmons' murder, Jason Wynn. Back on Earth, the Malabolgia torments Spawn by revealing the truth to him. His body is nothing more than necroplasm and his true remains are still in the grave. Later in the alleys known as Rat City, Spawn and Anti-Spawn go at it. Spawn is nearly defeated when the homeless people he protects distract Anti-Spawn long enough for Al to eviscerate him. Up next, Spawn meets the magician Houdini. Houdini Houdini teaches Spawn how to use magic without actually using up his necroplasm. It's after this that we get our first look at Spawn's shoelace face. It's been speculated that Spawn had to stitch his face with a shoelace after his team up with Batman in The Dark Knight Returns Grant Morrison Batverse, where the issue ends with Batman splitting open Spawn's face with a battering. Since the Batman Spawn crossover took place immediately before issue 21. However, in continuity, it's explained that Spawn's face was split open by Houdini. A bum named Bobby, who was an EMT and used a shoelace from an old sneaker to stitch Spawn's face. So he didn't have to use his limited power supply to heal. Other major stories include, included in this volume are Tony Twist rebuilding a cyborg overkill, Detective Sam Burke blackmailing police chief Banks in regards to Billy Kincaid, Spawn vs. Tremor, Spawn vs. The Curse, Spawn dealing with his guilt over feeling that he cheated on Wanda with the Spawn hunting angel Angela. That's right, they had sex during the Spawn Angela miniseries, nonetheless. Spawn's costume gets severely injured. 
uh, Spawn befriends two boys whose father beats them, and Spawn later attacks him, and I, I won't give up the ending to that, but let's say it's pretty graphic. Uh, Spawn versus the KKK. Uh, K7 Letha, which is Spawn's costume, evolves for the first time. This is where we get the big boot and uh, the more spikes throughout his costume. Uh, the forces of heaven choose another to become their warrior to take down Spawn. This time, his name is the Redeemer, but he looks just like the anti-Spawn. <clears throat> I really enjoyed Volume 2. Todd McFarlane really came up with some great stories for these early issues, especially not shying away from, the, from a child abuse story or a black anti-hero versus the KKK in the Deep South, and even revealing that even though Al Simmons' wife moved on after his death with his best friend, he still feels married to her, and even feels tortured like he cheated on her with Angela. So, since Angela is an angel, and Spawn is dead, but it's not his original body, it's his body is made up of necroplasm, is it still considered necrophilia? I highly recommend checking out this volume, or once again, for those of you who prefer Spawn Origins, check out books 2, 3, 4, 5, and the beginning of 6. And if you'd rather just collect the single issues, it's issues 13 through 33, plus Batman Spawn, plus the Spawn Angela miniseries. Coming up next week on Recommended Reading, we're going to be getting into the Christmas spirit with Batman Noel by Lee Bermejo with respect to uh, Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol. So uh, take it easy, guys. Enjoy. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. guys if you like this video make sure you hit that like button maybe put a comment below and hit that subscribe button and be sure to head on over to our facebook page links are in the description below